what what an amazing ride this has been. Um, and I am, Becky thinks I'm crazy because at the end, well, for so many reasons, we don't have time to go into how many reasons she thinks I'm crazy, but I get excited for the RA and everybody else is going crazy. They're tearing their hair out. They're going, okay, we, get, we it, part of it's a show, part of it's politics, part of it's making sure people are heard and there's always fires to put out. And I get into this little zone where I just know it's gonna be great. And it always is. I felt that when I, 1985, Los Angeles, my first RA, 562 years ago. And I'm sitting there and it's like, this cannot work. Look at all these people. This can't be real. We're just going to sit and listen to speeches. We're not going to vote. And people spoke to the motion and spoke against the motion. And it did work. And this amazing St. Mary Hatwood Futrell Oh my, and she had, she was this conductor of this orchestra of democracy. And I went, oh my God, I want more of this. And we always, we always want to bring our delegates together to do something big. I don't want to waste my time doing something small. And it's more than putting on a show. It's so personal for me, delegates. The RA is where I fell in love with us. And I, I, I'd I, only been teaching a few years. My local president in the Granite Education Association, love you, Granite. Uh, the local president was the second grade teacher down the hall from me, Mr. Rasmussen. And I had a big mouth and a lot of opinions. And yes, I was always right and driving him crazy. And I kept telling him what the bargaining team should be doing. So he punished me by making me the chair of the bargaining team. I didn't know what I was doing, but you find out. And Granite had an open seat for an RA delegate, local delegate. And Alan Rasmussen said, you should run for this. These people are crazy. You are going to fit right in. And I walked into that hall. We all remember. First time delegates, you have not experienced that. I, I hope you've had a, a good experience at this virtual RA. But you've got to run again. You have got to walk into that hall and see 10,000 activists on their feet saying, nothing is gonna stop me. And I walked into that hall and I couldn't catch my breath. I just kept going, wow. And we listened to debate on what we wanted Congress to do on some new business item. And I listened to Mary shushing us and we got quiet. And I left thinking, I'm not alone. This is powerful. Something is going to happen in the world for no other reason than that enough people said I. And we voted to make something happen. And I told you my husband thinks we're nuts. Do you see why I love him? Even if you didn't understand a word he said, I, I still have to translate his English. But much better. And... Maybe we are crazy because every single one of us ran for this. Nobody, nobody handed us. It wasn't our turn. We put our name on something and made people vote for us because we said, my job is I'm supposed to change the world. That's why we wanted to become educators because we said, of course, that's how we're supposed to change the world. It's natural for us. It's not, it's not crazy for us to say, I will change the word world. Good Lord, I love you so much, delegates. I love the people that I hug every time I see them. 
I love those of you that I'm never going to meet because it's us. I can't even see you and I love you. And I'm going to get into great big trouble if I start naming people. But Miss Becky, my sister, you are the smartest, strongest person I have ever met. We have been through the greatest joys and the greatest sorrows that people can go through. And we shared it with each other. I adore you. And Princess, your light is the first one on in the morning and it's still burning when I'm heading out and I'm heading out when it's dark outside. You have such dedication to everything you put your mind to. And Kim, you are one of my uh, greatest accomplishments is that we had some excellent, excellent choices uh, for taking John's position. And I loved them all. You, you are just the right person for this moment to lead a staff that is an envy. I, we have staff, I hope, all over. Some of them are in this room. Some of them are in the other room. Some of them are online watching. I have had the honor of working with professionals that are an envy to every other organization, not just in this town, but in this country. They are amazing. They make me look so good. They make me understand what I need to understand. I am an excellent sixth grade teacher. I am not an infectious disease researcher. And we have people who will go out there and research things and bring that information back to me. And when I talk to the press, they think I'm an infectious disease researcher. Don't tell anybody. You lead them with such pride. You lead them towards the mission that this representative assembly has set. And my dear, dear, dear executive committee, why can't you be here? Oh, you know, we have former presidents on the line right now, and they have presided over incredible executive committees, especially the one I was on when I was in executive committee, because I was pretty fabulous, I know that. I just can't believe anyone has had the combination of heart and soul and brain power and muscle power and people who would do anything to do what we need to do. And so Christine and Robert and Hannah and Shelly and Eric and, oh, yeah, who's the other one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like Dorothy in the last scene in The Wizard of Oz when she says, and Scarecrow, I think I'll love you most of all. I'll miss you. George, I think I'll miss you most of all. And you know that you're not the Scarecrow. No one in the world, including you, has never sang, if I only had a brain. Oh, my Lord, my brother, mi hermano, you are gold. You are brave. You are good. You are driven. You talk as much as I do. You are my friend. I love you so much, George. I love you all. Thank you for always, always giving me everything you've got and whatever you can drag out of anyone else. I am so proud to be your friend. I'm so grateful to the Granite Education Association. I am so in love with my mighty Utah Education Association that raised me from babyhood. And so, so many of you that I am privileged to be able to call friend. No president, I'll arm wrestle you for it, no president in the history of this union has ever been so lucky to have a governance team and a staff team work so closely together. 
and to say, what's the job to do today? And let's get it done and do it with honor and do it with power. And to my other family, I'll be home a little more often. To my amor, mi Alberto, uh, mi prioridad. I'm coming home, babe. Voy a casa finalmente. And I know that you're seeing my makeup run. Oh, I worked so hard on it. I'm not really sad to leave because it's time. It's time to go home. But mostly I'm not sad because you're still gonna be here. Even you, George, once you're in this, you leave your heart behind. There's something in us that took a part of this, took a part of our soul. And even when we step aside and someone takes our place, there's that piece of us that's still gonna be here because there's still great work to do, because we will let absolutely nothing stop that. Not a pandemic, not a corrupt president, nothing. I will always be so proud to be the smallest part of us, the nation's largest union, a union that has used its power in the service of someone else's child, in the service of communities, in the service of people who need our love. God bless you for being who you are and making me who I am.